In his first three years at Augusta Fells, he failed 22 classes and was late or absent 272 times. No one from the school told this mother her son was failing and not going to class. Yeah. Are we really going to pretend that report cards don't exist so this woman can blame the school and avoid owning her failures as a parent? Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to the Bougie Oreo where I give my opinion and perspective on history, current events, entertainment, and other stories as it relates to black culture. Today I want to comment and give my opinion on this story coming out of Baltimore where one of the students has a 0.13 GPA after four years. So this student is not going to be graduating and the sad part about this story is there are 58 other students at this school who have the same or a lower GPA than this kid. So I'm going to play some of the video and add my comments afterward. Tonight, an alarming discovery out of a Baltimore City high school where hundreds of students are failing. As Project Baltimore's Chris Paps explains, we found a student who's passed three classes in four years and is ranked near the top half of his class. We're not letting none of this get the best of us. All right? Mm -hmm. Be strong, son. We got this. He's stressed, and I am too. Like, I told him I, I probably will start crying. Like, my son is, I don't know what to do for him. This coming June is when Tiffany France thought her son would receive his diploma. And I'm just trying to fight. He like, Mom, what, what was all this for? What did I do this for? Like, don't he get a chance? Do he get a chance? But after four years of high school, this mom just learned her 17-year-old has to start over. He's been moved back to ninth grade. Why would he do three more years in school? Y'all, he didn't fail, the school failed him. The school failed at their job. They failed, they failed. That's the problem here, they failed. They failed, he didn't deserve that. Francis son attends Augusta Fell Savage Institute of Visual Arts in West Baltimore. His transcripts show in four years, he has passed just three classes, earning two and a half credits, which places him in ninth grade. But Franz says she didn't know that until February. She has three children and works three jobs. She thought her oldest son was doing well because even though he failed most of his classes, he was being promoted. His transcripts show he failed Spanish 1 and Algebra 1, but was promoted to Spanish 2 and Algebra 2. He also failed English 2, but was passed on to English 3. I'm just assuming that if you are passing, that, that you have the proper things, you know, to go to the next grade. And, you know, the right grades, you have the right credits. As we dig deeper into her son's records, we can see in his first three years at Augusta Fells, he failed 22 classes and was late or absent 272 times. But in those three years, only one teacher requested a parent conference, which Fran says never happened. No one from the school told this mother her son was failing and not going to class. Yeah. Francis' son, in his four years at Augusta Fells, earned a grade point average of 0.13. He only passed three classes. But his transcripts show his class rank is 62 out of 120. This means nearly half of his classmates, 58 of them, have a GPA of 0 0.13 or lower. He's a good kid. Like he didn't deserve that. Where is the mentors? Where is the help for him? I don't, I hate that this is happening to my child. In your opinion, did the school system fail this child? Absolutely. This city school administrator who works inside North Avenue asked not to be identified for fear of retaliation. That school community failed this student. This administrator told Fox 45 News, city schools failed because it has protocols and interventions set up to help students who are falling behind or have low attendance. In Francis' son's case, they didn't happen. I get angry. I, I, there's, there's nothing but, but frustration. We see on the news uh, the, the crime that occurs, 
the murders, the shootings. We know that there are high levels of poverty in Baltimore. Things like this are adding to that. These children are why I do this work. Dr. Sonia Santelisis was school CEO four years ago when Francis' son was a freshman. But she will not interview with Fox 45 News. Instead, we received this two-page statement, which explains what should happen when a student is chronically absent or failing. The district says students received a letter about their academic status status this past summer and records can be accessed through the campus portal. When a student is absent, an automated call is placed to the number on file. The statement also said the school conducted recent home visits and the student's parent visited the school. But France says none of that happened. What this statement does not address is why Francis' son was promoted despite failing classes. It doesn't discuss his class rank or the 58 other students with a GPA of 0.13 or lower. But it does say North Avenue is reviewing actions that impacted student outcomes at the school prior to this year. I really, it took a lot for me to just build the courage to do this, like. If you were to talk to this mom, what would you say to her? You know, I didn't have a hand on this student, but I work for city schools. So he is one of my kids. I would hug her and I would, I would, I would apologize profusely. And he feels embarrassed, like he feels like a failure. And I'm like, you can't feel like that. And you have to be strong. And you gotta, you gotta keep fighting. You know, life is about fighting. Things happen, but you gotta keep fighting. And and he's willing. He he's he's trying. But he where where do who would he turn to when the people that's supposed to help him is not? Who do he turn to? So there is no doubt that the school has problems. There is no reason why this kid should have been allowed to go to the next level class when he failed the first one. He shouldn't have moved on to Spanish 2 after failing Spanish 1. He shouldn't have moved on to Algebra 2 after failing Algebra 1. He just shouldn't have been able to move on. So this, the school definitely did fail in this regard. And based on this story, there also should have been a lot more communication coming from the school about this child's performance throughout his time in the school. So in those aspects, I will say the school did fail and they should be held accountable. The school district, the county, everyone should be held accountable all the way up to the top. However, the mother is not blameless in this. This kid passed three classes in four years. He earned 2.5 credits. That means he failed 22 classes and based on the report, he was either late or absent from school 272 times over the course of his three and a half years. And the mother is saying she didn't know until February. Are we really going to pretend that report cards don't exist so this woman can blame the school and avoid owning her failures as a parent? Baltimore schools are required to provide a report card every marking period. That's four times a year. On top of the report cards, they are also required to provide interim report cards between each marking period. So there is some type of grades report going out to parents at least eight times a year. So with this being February of her kid's senior year, that means this is right after the second marking period. And this mother will have received 14 prior report cards and another 14 interim progress reports. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but report cards contain your grades, your attendance, your GPA, and the number of credits you've earned compared to the number of credits required for graduation. So this mother has no excuse for not knowing what's going on with her kid up until this point, regardless of the school failing to proactively communicate these issues to her. Now, I was fortunate enough to have parents who, although they worked around the clock to provide for me and my siblings, they were in my ass about school performance. And my school was by no means a great school in the state of Illinois. I think when I was in school, probably about 15% of the student body tested proficient in reading and math. So this was not a great school. However, as a student, 
I knew that 22 credits were required to graduate. I needed four English credits, I needed three math credits, I needed three science credits, I needed four social studies credits. You know all of this stuff and it's published every year what the graduation requirements are. Furthermore, for me at least, a C was not acceptable. My parents treated a C like it was an F. And because of that, I was able to go to a top 10 college. But parents' involvement does matter in the development of a child. And this parent here is not blameless in the situation that's happening to her kid. So this mother didn't just not know about her kid failing. She didn't care. She went three and a half years of getting quarterly report cards and interim progress report cards where she saw all of those Fs and saw that her kid wasn't going to school and did nothing. As long as the school was moving her son along, she was okay with that failure. That is just unacceptable. So I did a little bit of digging and Baltimore requires 21 credits to graduate. That means your kid should be earning five to six credits to their name each year. So for three and a half years, those quarterly report cards said that he only had 2.5 credits. 2.5 credits does not equal, does not come close to, does not approach 21 credits. So for three and a half years, this mother should have known that her kid was not on track to graduate. So for three years, her son has been in the streets and not in school, which tells me that this mother didn't even open her kid's report cards. Either she didn't open them or she didn't care. This mother was okay going on the news, sharing her child's transcripts with 22 Fs in three passing grades to blame the school and completely ignore her own actions and her own failure to make sure that her kid was performing to the best of his ability. And not only that, this mother allowed the news to video record her son playing PlayStation while talking about the school's failure instead of reading a book and studying and showing that he is dedicated to school. This is how sad this failure is. Although the school messed up, this kid messed up by not going to school and failing almost all of his classes. This mother messed up by one, not making sure that her kid was doing what he needs to do to graduate and making sure that he was showing up to school, but also by holding the school accountable until it was too late. See, this is what really differentiates us from white people and Asian people as a collective. White parents are not gonna accept their kids getting Fs all through high school and then blame it on the school and they're damn sure are not going to share it with the news and post their L's for the whole nation to see. Same thing goes for Asian families. So I had an Asian friend in college who was the daughter of Chinese immigrants and she as well as some of my other Asian friends in school explained to me that a B plus is considered failing in their community. So an Asian F is a B plus. Now, how many of us really hold that standard for ourselves where the expectation is excellence and perfection and anything less than that is unacceptable? They were expected to get straight A's. Anything less than an A minus was considered failing, was considered unacceptable. They demand perfection and excellence and success and they expect their children to be the very best. This is why we fail as a community because we don't hold those same expectations for ourselves. But imagine if we did. Imagine if we set the standard for our kids to get straight A's. And if they got less than that, especially if they got D's and F's, that it was considered unacceptable. No PlayStation for you. No outside time and fun for you. You're going to do nothing but study and hit these books every evening and every weekend. This is why those communities excel beyond our ability in the black community because they make the sacrifices and they put in the work and those parents are on their children and know everything that they do all while doing as many jobs as possible to make their ends meet. This is what differentiates us. It's not the skin color. It is the caring and the dedication towards excellence. This mother in Baltimore, along with all of the other mothers in that school who had failing kids, were perfectly okay with their kids getting Fs. As long as the school kept moving him to the next level, she thought everything was hunky-dory. This story serves as an example as to why our community stays perpetually behind. This is a symptom of the much larger issue where we are okay with 
failure and struggling along. And then anytime we get caught red handed or we get caught not being prepared, we want to play the victim and blame the system or blame the white man or blame anybody else while completely ignoring the fact that we also had a hand in our own destruction. We can't just blame systemic racism for the issues with the educational system while also allowing our kids to not show up at school at all and then bring home F's for three and a half years and then wonder why he is not graduating. Yes, the school messed up. The school definitely should have been proactively communicating and making sure that this parent was well aware that her kid was at risk before it got to that point. But at the same time, the mother should have been making sure that her kid showed up to school. Parents are ultimately responsible for the behavior of their children. The school can't make the kids show up for school. The school can't make the kid do their homework. The school can't make their kid put down the PlayStation remote and open up his book and do some studying. This is on the parents. We need to stop as a collective, one, posting our L's online and on the news and embarrassing ourselves on television. And two, we need to start looking into the mirror at where we fail to take appropriate action. And until we're ready to do that, we're going to continue to be behind. And the funny thing about this story is the news anchors and the reporters, they didn't even ask the mom about this stuff. They didn't even challenge the mom about where she slipped up as a parent. So they're perfectly okay with her blaming the system. And they're perfectly okay not challenging and not holding this mother accountable. So if the outside cultures are not going to hold us accountable, the media is not going to hold us accountable, and we can't even hold our own selves accountable. Well, we are forever going to be dependent on this system to take care of us and never be capable of taking care of ourselves. And that's what I got out of the story. So that's all that I have to share for today. Let me know what you think in the comment section and feel free to hit the like and subscribe.